Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I wanna to show you what I think is the most easy way to add a pocket to a side seam of pants or a skirt or even a onesie. When my beginning sewers want to add a pocket, this is the way I get them to do it. It's pretty fail safe. I think it's very beginner friendly and I have confidence that you can do it too, even if you're a total beginner. There's a tiny bit of drafting involved because you can easily do this even if the pattern you're using doesn't come with a pocket piece. I'll show you how to draft that from scratch. So today's really just all about the pocket. I'll show you two different versions, one on a pair of sweat shorts, super casual and super easy with the knit fabric. Also on the pants that I'm wearing that I just finished and I have to say I'm in love with these pants. The pattern I'm using today is Berta 5969, but this method of making the pocket can really work with any sweat pant, casual pant, skirt, onesie, anything that has a side seam, you can totally add this pocket to. The curved opening like this might make it look more advanced, but actually it makes it easier. It's so much easier than the traditional way of sewing on a pocket, where you sew a pocket piece to both fronts and a pocket piece to both backs and you sew around. That is not my preferred way of making a pocket at all. It's not very easy. It always looks weird and awkward and it's really hard to finish your edges nicely. And all of those problems are solved with this method. You can make the curve just as big or as small as you want. And I think this pocket is just a great tool to have in your toolbox. So let's get busy. So for the red ones, I just basted it together to check the fit. These pants don't come with a pocket pattern at all. So I'm just gonna make my own. So I'm just tracing around that corner. And then you can see here where I drew where I wanted the opening to be with a scrap of soap. So then I have my pointed tracing wheel, which you can just use a pin and pick your way along that line, but they are handy to have. So I do have a link in the description below. I'll be tracing off where I drew my line. Good. So this is where I want the actual opening to be. The curved ruler is nice to have. You can definitely live without it, but if you want one, there's a link in the description. So for the opening, I'll draw a line just about a quarter inch inside that curve to just add in a bit of seam allowance. Go ahead, something like that. So just for your reference, this is coming about two and a quarter inches below the waist of the, of the pants. And these pants have a separate waistband. If your pants have a casing that folds down, you'll need to shift the whole thing down. I would lower this by another two and a quarter inches. Four and a half inches down would be fine if you're turning a casing, good. But for me with the separate waistband, two and a quarter looks good. All right, then the opening itself is exactly six inches and how far I've come in is about an inch and a half. Six inches and this is about an inch and a half. So then drawing the pocket bag, I just want to make sure that it's big enough for my hand to go in comfortably. And most people do tend to make pockets just a little too small. And so be generous with your pockets. Let's call that 11 inches. And then from side to side, six inches. Then I need to just duplicate this because I do need two different pocket pieces. I'll just staple my pocket to a second piece of paper, making sure my staples are outside of the pocket area. And then I'll cut just on the outer edge of this pocket. This is the one that's going to show when I make the cutout opening. So you can cut this one out of a contrast fabric if you want. I want my red pants just to be able to go with lots of different things. So I'm gonna use all the same fabric. And now this one, I'm gonna cut out right along that inside curve. This edge is going to be tucked into the waistband. If I didn't have a separate waistband, then I wouldn't make this corner. I would just bring that straight in like that. I also need to make sure I leave myself enough seam allowance here and here, because I'll be sewing here and here. So don't let these areas get to be too, too skinny. And then I'll cut two of the full pocket and two of the pocket with the bite taken out of it. Then I remove the basting stitches from both of my side seams. And then my first sewing step is just to sew the pocket with the bite taken out of it onto both front pieces, right sides together. Now on this fabric, you really can't tell right from wrong side. So I'm gonna switch over and show you on the gray sweatshorts. But just so you can see here, 
on the pants that have the separate waistband. I'm putting that right into the top corner and I'll just be sewing around the two curves. Here are my two fronts. These are the two side seams. There are the two center front edges. So this is where the two pocket pieces will go. So I'm going to start with the pocket that has the bite taken out of it. On these shorts, the casing is going to be turning down about three, three and a half centimeters. So that's a total of like seven centimeters that will be involved in that casing. So I don't really want the pocket to be up in that casing area, but it can come up to there. Seven centimeters or about two and three quarters of an inch would be fine. Alrighty, so I will do that. I'll just make them both the same. This fabric doesn't really have a right and a wrong side. This one definitely does. But it is nice, I think, to use a lighter weight fabric for that facing. Since this fabric is quite thick, it just reduces the bulk a little bit. I'll just be sewing at the edge of my presser foot around both of those curves. So I just want to get a few pins in here just to keep that sitting nice. I do want to make sure it comes right to the side seam. You know, I don't want to have a gap in here. So I'll be sewing a quarter inch there and here. Let's go to the machine. My presser foot goes right with its edge along the edge of that bite. And I'm just using a regular universal needle and a straight stitch. Because I'm going to be top stitching this area, that's going to hold it firm. It won't be able to stretch out and break the stitching. Back tack at each end. And I'm just going to go straight into my other side. So this is the pocket facing. It's now sewn right sides together with the front. And now I'm just going to be cutting off that extra fabric. I'll just be cutting away this fabric here, right even with the pocket piece. So now you're starting to get the idea. Now this facing is going to go to the inside. This seam allowance is quite small, so I probably don't have to snip into my curve. But if you want to, you can do a few little snips. And what that does is that when you turn it right side out, it allows that to spread out and sit nicer. But as it is, I think it's going to be okay. So now at the iron, I want to bring this pocket piece around to the inside and give that a press. Arrange it with your hands first. If I can see a little edge of the front, from the inside, then I know I can't see the lining from the outside, and that's what I want. I want to have a nice clean edge where we don't see that lining. And I'm going to stick a couple of pins in there too, because our next step of sewing is going to be to top stitch this. So I want to keep that just as nice as I've pressed it. Good, so I'm going to be top stitching at the edge of my presser foot right around there. And then the edge of my presser foot is going to follow the edge of that curve. If I see that facing poking out at all, I'll tuck it in, roll it to a bit to the inside so it doesn't show from the outside. This sometimes does this to you. It wants to kind of go in like that. Your job is to bring that right out so you make that nice curve. And I'll go right into the second side. Okay. So there's my top stitch edge of the opening. Flipping those both now, wrong side up. And now we take the other two pocket pieces and go right side together with that first pocket piece. Stick a few pins around there. And it's just the two layers. I'm not sewing right through the shorts, just the two pocket layers, that's it. If it's not lining up on this edge over here, that doesn't really scare me too much because everything else is lining up. I've got that wiggle room. I'm not going to worry about it. It's all good. I'll just be sewing those pocket layers together just from this corner around to that corner. Just the two layers. We're not sewing it right to the short. And again, I'm just going to be sewing at the edge of my presser foot. Both sides like that. And then we'll be able to finish off these edges. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is serge or zigzag my edges. With a knit like this, it's not going to fray. You can also just do a double row of stitching and that makes it more durable. 
It also makes it so that my seam allowance here will lie smoother, especially after it's been washed. It's not going to be able to roll up. I'll put a couple of pins at these edges just to tame those edges and make them stay together. Just the little ends of the pockets here. Okay, so the steam iron is a blessing from heaven. <laughs> All I did was sew here, edge of my presser foot there and there, and then I just kind of ironed that for a couple minutes. It just made everything mm, so nice. Okay, now I can sew this whole side seam all in one. This is the new side seam edge of that. So now I just can sew the side seam just straight up and down. No business about going around the pocket or anything like that. I'll sew both side seams and then I'll be able to finish my edges. If I was serging, super easy, way easier to serge this straight line than it would be to serge this kind of configuration. It's just, you just can't finish that edge well. Plus, I'll be able to press my seam allowance toward the back to do a top stitch. Whereas in this style of pocket, you can't do that, right? These layers have to work, have to fall toward the front. This can go open. So this one, I'm gonna be able to do a nice top stitch. Make sure my pocket is sitting nice on the inside. And then one more line right in between that first line of stitching and the edge. Okay, so that double line of stitching keeps it pretty stable. I just used a straight stitch because this is vertical. There's not a ton of stretch there, so I don't have to worry about using a stretch stitch. And that's just nice and strong and stable. Both sides like that, and then I'll go to the iron. And now I've pressed the seam going toward the back. Now I can easily run a line of top stitching right down that side seam. Here's my pocket opening. Just looks so clean and nice. Looks really cute. So I'll run my line of top stitching right there and then show you what that looks like. And you're probably wondering if I'm gonna top stitch this, did I really have to do that second line of stitching? And the answer is no, you're right. I did not have to, but it's all good. There, now you can see what it looks like with that line of top stitching going down the side seam. I think that just looks great. You could make this opening more shallow if you wanted. You could just come in one inch, right? And that would give you sort of a shape like that. That would be fine too. Now I'm just gonna put the two sides together. So I've got the two backs lined up over here, the two fronts lined up over here, and I'm just gonna sew the two curves. You can do these steps in a different order if you, if you prefer to sew your inseam now and then do the whole crotch seam as one U-shape. That's totally fine, that works too. I just find that for beginners, this is a nice, clear way of doing it. So I'm putting my double notch back together. I know that's the back. My single notch is together at the front, corners together. Everything just lines up very easily this way. Back to the machine, I'm gonna sew my two curves at the 15 line or a 5 8 line, and then one more time between there and the edge. Okay. That's the back curve with a double notch, and I've sewn it with a double line. And there's the front curve with a single notch, and I've sewn that with a double line. Now I'll take it this way, bring the inseam together, and I'll pin seam to seam. I could have one seam allowance going one way, one the other, just to spread out the bulk. Corner to corner, notch to notch. So I'll sew this line all in one at the 15 line or 5 8 line, and then a second row of stitching as well. So now I'm just finishing it off completely normal. So I've just pinned down my casing just wide enough to fit an elastic through. I'll sew around, leaving a gap at the center back. Then I'll put my elastic through, finish that off. Uh, and I did serge my edges there. I just, I couldn't help it. I had to serge. And then I'll just turn up my hem on the bottom and sew that. I'll just do that off camera, but I'll link a video here to a boxer short video if you do want to see how to do that. So I'll finish this off and then I'll show you how it looks. 
So the pants are done, the shorts are done, and I hope you love that pocket as much as I do. I think it's just really efficient and super straightforward, and I have confidence that you can do it, even if you're a beginner. So now, with my new pants, I need a top to wear with them. I've got some fabric left, red thread in the machine, so I'm just gonna keep sewing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. In my stash, I have this fabric too. Yes, right? Okay, that's what I'm gonna make next. I'm gonna make a top out of the solid red, a top out of this, pants out of this. Everything's gonna mix and match. I've got a full day ahead. So check back in with me for next week's video where I think I'll take you through a tutorial of making these exact pants. Until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.